Uh, what we've realised is that although academics are well versed in developing uh, very effective programmes here at UCL, uh, there's, a, there's a growing interest in using uh, blended methods, so increasingly using technology and distance methods to, to, to in incorporate in the courses. On top of that, of course, we now have the uh, Connected Curriculum Initiative trying to bring in um, more uh, research-based education into the designs. Our academic colleagues are finding it quite complex to try to design these into, into programmes. In the sense, there's a lot more choice, there's a lot more things you can do with students. And what we're looking for is a simple and quick methodology that people could help them to design rich uh, environments uh, for their students. So we had a look around to look at what methods were out there. And one we thought was quite attractive was one called Viewpoints that came from the University of Ulster. What we kind of liked about it, it was a very rapid development system. It's based on a series of cards which the project teams, uh, the, the, the course teams worked with. In order to kind of lay out the overall design of the course, the cards were uh, represented various elements of the course which could then be placed in a sequence to represent the whole course design. Uh, the nice thing about this method is on the cards on one side was the various uh, elements and on the other side was examples of their implementation activities, if you like. So the course team could go through a gen from a general dis dis discussion of the course general shape right through to a list of sequence of activities. And they ended up with a storyboard which could form the basis of a more uh, a richer uh, course description or a, 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 a representation in the virtual learning environment of the Moodle, for example. What we've done is to adapt that for UCL. And we've done a number of things. Um, one of the things is to look at the card set itself and think about what's the elements of the course we want to uh, put in there. Now, what we're working here is on a, a module level design and we've chosen um, a, um, a framework from Professor Loyalard from Institute of Education who had already developed uh, the notion of a set of learning types, six learning types, which were typical of courses both in a conventional format and online. So they became the basis of our cards. To show how the um, workshop uh, progresses, I'll give you an example of working with a, a team uh, to design a, a module. Our first workshop, ABC Curriculum Design Workshop, we worked with the programme, BSc Population Health Sciences. Um, we met with a team consisting of two academics and one learning technologist from uh, Population Health Sciences. Um, Clive and I went through the presentation and explained uh, the principle of viewpoint principles, uh, we talked about learning types and mentioned connected curriculum and how it can fit through this uh, in this design process. So we asked the uh, module team, module lead, leader usually, to describe the module characteristics. What's the unique selling points, if you like? What would appear in a, in a catalogue entry which would attract students? That's important to capture at the outset. The next thing we do is we use the, the learning types, uh, Professor Laura Large learning types, in a sort of a star diagram, this one here, to try to indicate what's the shape of the module. It's an indication of which are the bits that's going to be, is it going to be concentrated on, for example, production or discussion or whatever. That gives us a starting point uh, for the, the discussion. We also ask them to say what is the blend, how much online, how much face-to-face. Okay. We then, we then, we, these will be revisited at the, at the end of the design process. Once that's done, we give the um, module team uh, cards to work with. These are the sort of cards that they get. Each of these cards representing one of the learning types. This one's discussion, this one's production, this one's collaboration. There's six of them all together. Um, the academic colleagues find it very easy to work with these because they're based on really what you would do in any conventional course. We then sequence them along in a timeline. So there may be several of these as you go along. Um, that again gives a second chance to discuss what the shape of the, 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 the programme might look like, what the students is essentially are going to do. Once that's completed, these are, um, we turn the cards over and on the other side are suggested activities associated with, associated with those learning types. Uh, the team then go and discuss that and decide which of these activities they want to use and there's plenty of space here. If they can think of other things, novel things for the course or something unique to, the, unique to that particular module, they can add that in. Okay, that discussion is very rich by the way. 
after they got the cards, they actually put them on a, a sheet of paper, A1. They decided how they're going to decide uh, divide a course. So they went week 1 to 4, 4 to 8, and 9 to 10, and so on. Um, they selected learning types, then they turned the cards over and selected activities that they're going to use. They also added some activities that were not listed here. Uh, they also they selected both online and offline activities and face-to-face -face activities. At the end of the uh, process here, and that takes about an hour, we have the, um, the uh, storyboard which really comprises uh, a whole range of activities uh, which represent each of the learning types. The final um, part of that is we ask the, um, uh, the team to consider where assessment is going to uh, fit into this. So what we say is any of these activities in fact can be assessed, uh, or nearly all activities can be assessed. Uh, after they've finished they actually put stickers selecting a summative and formative assessment that they are going to use for their students. We then go back and we look to see whether this still represents the unique points of the course that they, uh, that they um, included at the beginning and also does it match the shape that we wanted at the very beginning of the course the, in the star diagram. Uh, they readdressed the graph again at this point and they programmed by this point became a bit more uh, blended than what it was at the beginning. Uh, we finished the workshop, they had an overview of the all activities uh, in a program and they could see what learning types they used more than the others so they could address those in development of other modules if they wanted to. And what I said about this process is here. Okay, I'm Dr. Nicola Shelton, I'm the Programme Director for the uh, Faculty's first full undergraduate uh, BSc in Population Health. And this has been extremely useful because not only are we starting to think about individual modules and how we can um, use electronic resources, we're actually starting to think about the whole degree together rather than just it modules separately. Um, my name is Stephen Gibbridge, I'm a lecturer in Population Health, working on the new BSc in Population Health. I think this process has been really useful because it's really helped us think about modules in their entirety rather than just kind of thinking specifically about uh, various aspects of the course. So I think it's kind of really good to kind of have everything mapped out in a clear kind of um, framework like this. I'm Sean Gainford, learning technologist for the Faculty of Population Health and working very closely on a new BSc in Population Health degree. This has been um, very useful in everything from mapping out the learning objectives to seeing a broader view of how the module can be set up, but also going um, very specific of what actual activities you can use to um, connect with the different learning objectives um, and activities that are possible. So um, it's a great storyboard um, reference and, and very useful for, for many people. And finally, I, I'd like to say that what it's enabled us to do is identify opportunities for formative assessments using online resources that we haven't envisaged. So it's definitely added to the, um, the learning experience and hopefully engage the students far more than it would have done.